Thank you very much, Marta. Um, again, a big applause to you, because it's true. Where are you? You're kind of hiding. You're over there already. Last row. You should be in the front row, Marta. It was a fantastic presentation. And again, I think we, the world, uh, we as a society, we need more of you guys having this pioneering spirit and what you achieved in such a short term of period or such really is amazing. So again, congratulations and a big applause to your presentation. This was really interesting. So standing here now on behalf of a, an extremely huge but also an extremely successful company, I'm quite delighted in telling you of how we are driving change now within our corporation, within our company. And I think to make it very, very clear right from the beginning, we take all those questions serious. We are aware of our position in the market, and in particular, we are aware about the kind of duty that we have as the most successful premium car manufacturer in the world, also having a brand claim, meaning the best or nothing, to not only ask those questions, but also to find the right answer to it. I think you all agree with me that we are really living in these kind of times that are extremely interesting. And Marta said it, Suresh said it, and also Ali said it, we have a responsibility as individuals, but also as corporations. And it is us that is going to change the world in a way that we are living in the world where we want to live in. And therefore, we are asking ourselves a lot of questions going beyond this kind of case topics, autonomous, electric. We are asking ourselves very important with regards to consumer. And I would just like to highlight the five trends where we defined our basic shared beliefs in how we see that things are going to change and are going to influence our business model. We are talking about a more and more empowered consumers. We have seen it, you have seen all the smartphones, now I see the smartphones again. Yeah, people are sharing, people are connected. We have much higher expectations because we simply know more today. By sharing, we learn from each other, and this makes it easy, it is simple. And I mean, it all comes back to customers who want, who expect, and somehow they want to have it also in an empathic way. They don't want to have a product to be offered to them simply because it's a beautiful thing. They want to have it because it fits to their lifestyle and it fits some, somehow already also uh, to their values. We have seen it, and I should probably in the future put Marta's company here in as well. We have a lot of challengers. You see the classic brands. I mean, we always had that pyramid in terms of BMW, Audi, and us competing against the number one position then at the end of December. But what is now really different is we have more and more companies on that slide which would not be there or which wouldn't have been there a year ago. And I think this is dramatic. I often get asked by journalists, but also by friends, what I fear in my position leading that huge IT department globally in our company. And most probably, and often, I always answer, these are not the companies on that slide. I fear the ones who are not yet there. Because they have the, they have the pace, they have the emotions, they have the passion to really shape something new, and we might not yet have them on our radar when something very important is happening. What is also an extremely big and huge change is what comes with technology. And we had it this morning very often in the presentation. Ali said, big data is big meaning. Yeah, we know that somehow the truth lays in data, but it also comes back to what I said in the beginning of my presentation, it's about how we care about data, how, we be, how responsible we feel when it comes to data. And we hear a lot of things coming, unfortunately, often currently in the last few months out of the United States. I don't know how you feel here in the UK, but what is clear to us is someone who is handling all those petabytes of data. It has to be someone or a corporation that truly understands 
that there is a responsibility to carry with it. There is a fourth topic, and we are coming to that social kind of challenge. I mean, everyone has to ask himself, how will I be able to make a positive contribution by leveraging now the digital transformation? So what is it when we talk about the machine age? Are we only replacing others? Is it just that we try to disaggregate someone in order to be more powerful? But what happens then if 40% of the revenue in the parking areas of the airports are going down? What happens if all the taxi drivers in the world will lose their jobs? I mean, how do we treat all those changes? And are we prepared in order also to answer those questions, which are not in the inner laying of only disaggregating or disrupting another business model? It's about, if you ask us as a corporation, it's about a sustainable transition that we need and it's in particular that we rebuild trust in the digital economy. And when it comes to data, when it comes to personal use of data, I think we are getting more and more sensitive about how important that is. And again, it was for us a very, very crucial point when it came to kind of defining our strategy at Daimler. There is another topic, and I'm quite quite glad that this room filled up uh, this morning. It is a war of talent in which we are all in. I mean, we know it from ourselves, but we also know it when we recruit new people. I mean, it's not about the career only anymore. It's more if I'm able to find a purpose in the company where I'm working in. It's most probably also for a lot of here this morning in that room, it might not be to climb on that hierarchy ladder in a way as probably our parents still had that kind of dream of making their career. It's about, I want to change the game. I want to be in the midst, and at least for myself, I can always tell you that I still have goosebumps going every morning in our companies around the globe, meeting my IT colleagues over there who are about to change society and to really shape the way of how we see mobility in the future. So from working environment versus status, from true role models and role leaders, and not to have only bosses, I hope that I speak a little bit and I come uh, I kind of cross into your hearts. This is important when you as a company, and we have many, many thousands of colleagues entering new into our group every year. This is important for, me, for us that we bear that in mind. Every car manufacturer, not only the small ones, the challengers, when it comes to Elon Musk twittering around the globe what he has in mind, we all, we have one big question in mind. We are facing these challenges, and we ask ourselves, who's going to find the answer to the multitude of questions? Talking about Daimler, we were setting our strategy based on a two-principle strategy. We think that it's for many, many years, we, will, we have to exploit the current business model. We are hearing it very often. It will take a little while, so we cannot drop from moment, one moment to the other. So it's about exploiting the current business model in a way of that pressing the lemon, pressing this kind of citron in a way that we are able to also gain the money and the necessary funding in order to now invent what is in that explore area. So for us, it means what kind of capabilities, how much we can drive efficiency in our current processes and data technology helps us a lot utilizing robots, utilizing, you have seen it, machine learning, deep learning. We are investing millions, yeah, and even more investments every year in terms of really exploiting what we currently have. But then it comes to the invest on that new territory. And you know that we call it case, 
in terms of our strategy when it comes to exploring the new, to be connected, to be autonomous, when it comes to shared mobility concept, but also the electric combustion engines. Our strategy is there, very, very clear. You have on the left side the exploit area, we call it the core, and you have on the right side the case topics that you have heard from me as well. But then there are two underlying things that not any company who tries to answer should neglect. It's about your culture, the company, the way of how you act, and for sure also about your future readiness. You have to be extremely agile. You have to be extreme flexible in terms of moving fast. And this era is for us extremely important because we need, as a German-based company, to show profitable growth. You know that we have a different investment behavior of people in Europe than we see it today in the United States or elsewhere. So they have profit pro profitable growth for us is still a must in terms of then utilizing this investment for the new. So increasing the value of our company is the second topic and for sure it stays our absolutely utmost vision. We want to shape significantly the way of how we see the future of mobility and thereof also the future of our society. Coming now a little bit to my area, I have around 2,000 colleagues around the globe working in the sales and marketing IT area and we are on the customer. We are knowing precisely what our customers want, how we drive them into the new era. As you know, we have a lot of investments since many, many years now in shared mobility companies. We are acquiring them, we integrate them, not always 100%, but also from time to time uh, in a shared uh, basis. We just recently also um, stepped into um, Tel Aviv, Israeli-based company called Anagog, in terms of then benefiting from their startup behaviors. They do sensoric information, which are coming out of your smartphones, and they are able to kind of predict what kind of movement you are in. And we are utilizing this technology currently in our EQ Ready app, which is, since now only one year, we have been able to scale it in more than 20 markets around the globe. You see there is one topic, which drives us every day. As a car manufacturing, having legacy systems that are often more than 30 years old, and we are not in the cloud, we are not thinking about AI um, technology in those systems, but they are important because they drive our current business model. And as IT directors, we have the responsibility to, to transform those architecture into the new world with one clear aim. To be the digital champion in that industry, knowing that we have legacy, that we have an IT architecture, which is not probably state-of-the-art when it comes to the newer ones, the platform companies, but that only exists since 10, 15 years, it is important, nevertheless, because we are sitting since many, many decades, much more than you imagine, on more information and on more precise information about what people do when it comes to mobility. And we heard it, I think here it's a big question, the big game is around that knowledge and that intelligence of that information. Are we able to integrate those kind of know-how, this experience into the way of how we shape the future? If you ask me today, this morning, how I would sum it up in terms of when it comes to who is going to be the one who answers first, it is the one who is first. And therefore, we have set five priorities in the IT in terms of being quicker than ever before, being able to scale. It is not about launching the app some, an app somewhere. It is of really scaling in a way which is huge and which probably goes far beyond what you imagine currently what we are driving at the moment. We talk about a complete transformation into a free and open source software. We talk, and this is going to be a kind of a little highlight. I cannot talk too much about it yet. 
But those ones of you who are in the IT industry, you know that when it comes to cloud, there's little offer on the market. You might say, no, 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 it's not true. There's a lot of offer. But the huge ones are more or less occupying the world. You have the AAA. When it comes to China, it's Alibaba. You have the Azure cloud, and you have the AWS cloud. And most of our corporations are sitting with their application on those kind of clouds. Everyone, probably, of you, you here in that room, working in a corporation, in a startup, you are based, your entire business process is somewhere on one of these cloud providers. We are at the moment about to invent something which is going to hopefully radically changing that. So there might be an offer which will drive mobility in a way that it might be another option for companies when it comes to choosing a cloud. For us, important, we are here as a company to take now the competition seriously, and we do that since many, many months and years. We think that IT plays a crucial role in the company. We are really transforming into a tech company, and I think you know that. And I hope that I was able this morning to kind of give you that inspirational talk and speech about how much I personally drive that change, but also thousands and many, many more thousands of colleagues behind me are doing the same. We want significantly change the way of how we as people and individuals, the entire society in the world, perceives mobility, but also shapes mobility that we have more comfort and hopefully also a better world. Thank you very much for your attention.